Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Paula and I live a keto, low carb lifestyle. I have been living a ketogenic lifestyle now for over two years. I call it a lifestyle, not a diet, because this has truly become a lifestyle for me. The video today is gonna to be a little bit different than my normal videos where I film what I eat in a day vlogs and I share recipes and all of that. Today's video is more of a sit down and chat video. And over the past few weeks or even month, I have been getting some different messages from viewers that have watched my channel and have seen the health changes that I've experienced over the past two, over two years now. And I've been getting a lot of questions about autoimmune disease and migraines. So I really have been thinking over the past couple of weeks about filming this video because I feel that it is just something that I need to share. My doggy likes to be by me when I make my videos. I wanted to share with you a little bit today on how the ketogenic diet has healed my body. How foods, my choices in foods have made a difference in my health and healing has taken place in a lot of areas in my body. Those of you who follow me, who have followed me for a long time, you know that I am a person of faith, I am a believer, and I prayed for a long time. Over the course of a few years, I was suffering, I had a lot of health issues going on, I'll name a few of them in a little bit. I prayed fervently to God over the course of a few years that God would show me some answers, give me some answers on how I could heal my body and correct things that were going wrong. I do believe sincerely 100% having gone through this journey over the past two and a half years, that God is indeed the healer and his food is the medicine. Not all of the credit goes to the ketogenic diet, but I do believe that listening to God and obeying his voice has led me to healthier food options that have healed my body. So for those of you who may be new here, first I wanna talk about um, what was going on with my body. So I grew up on the standard American diet and I was completely fine all the way up into my late 30s. And then once I turned 40, it was like my health was falling apart very slowly. It took years for me to get to the point where I was, the point of desperation. Right before I started the ketogenic diet, I felt like my body was just slowly breaking down over time. And I do contribute that now to the standard American diet. I believe that some of the things I'm gonna talk about today, the food choices that I did used to eat was what did the damage to my body, to my cells, to my muscles, to my joints. It was my choices in food. Now I'm gonna talk about the health issues that I had in case you are new here and you don't know what I went through. Um, I do have some health update videos in my playlists that you can check out to see more in depth on what was going on. Today, I'm gonna to kind of just go over them lightly. One of the worst health issues that I had was debilitating migraines. I had migraines that I could not function at all. When I had these migraines, I had to sit in complete darkness. I actually would have to block my ears. I couldn't stand any kind of sound. I had the type of migraines where I would throw up. They were horrible. I also had joint pain in almost every part of my body. I went through a series of different kinds of physical therapy for different body parts. I had plantar fasciitis in my feet. I had problems with my Achilles tendon. I had problems with my knees. I had problems with my shoulders. I had really bad problems with my neck area all the way down into my shoulders. I had problems with my wrists. I've had surgery on my wrist. I just had a lot of inflammation in a lot of my joints. I had a special custom-made brace for my ankle, a leather brace. I slept in a boot. I had custom inserts that were made by my foot doctor that I had to wear inside of my shoes pretty much all day. Even when I was inside the house, he wanted me to wear these inserts. He did not want me to go around barefoot and I love going around barefoot. And so it was very hard on me to wear shoes in the house all day long. I had braces for my wrist. I was forever sitting on the couch with a heating pad or ice on some part of my body. I really, really suffered with joint pain. While I was at the foot doctor of all places, 
he had done some blood work on me because we were trying to figure out, we were trying to get to the root of some of my issues that I was having with my ankles and with my feet. He ran some special blood work on me and it came back that I was positive for lupus, autoimmune disease. I ended up getting sent to a rheumatologist. I was under the care of a rheumatologist for at least a year. I had been tested several times and every time I got tested, my ANA titter had shown that I was positive for lupus, although I never had a definite diagnosis for lupus, it kept coming back positive as lupus, if that makes sense. My rheumatologist at the time was also suspicious that I had rheumatoid arthritis. She said I definitely had arthritis throughout different parts of my body, um, but never had a diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis either. And she put me on a vegan diet. I was on a very healthy vegan diet. I thought at the time I wasn't consuming a lot of junk food. I was eating vegetables and a really whole food vegan diet. And I had no change. I did that diet for three to four months and nothing improved, nothing got better. I still had the migraines, I still had the joint pain, I had fatigue all of the time, I had brain fog, I had hormone issues. I was experiencing very, very severe hot flashes. I was suffering from the hot flashes. Also had problems with mood swings. I had problems with facial hair. I had problems with skin tags and all, just a whole slew of things was going on with my body. Two and a half years ago, I got to a point of desperation. I started really, really seeking God and praying and asking him to show me the way. And I came across one of Dr. Ken Berry's videos. It really got my attention. I started doing some research and long story short, I started eating a low carb ketogenic diet. Since I started this ketogenic diet within months, I would say two to three months, I started noticing drastic changes in my health for the better. My, my migraine headaches stopped. I have not had a migraine headache in over two years, not one migraine headache. And I say all the time that that in itself is a true miracle. And if I only experienced not having those migraine headaches and nothing else happened, I still would con continue to eat this way because those I suffered. I suffered from those migraines. But all the other things that happened to my body, I eliminated joint pain. I no longer have joint pain. If you could see the way I'm sitting right now, I'm sitting with my legs crossed here on the couch. I could not sit with my legs folded in and crossed like this at all. I couldn't sit on the floor and play with my grandkids without having to have help getting up. I no longer have any joint pain issues. Over the past two years, I've only experienced maybe three times some joint pain in my fingers, some stiff stiffness in my fingers, and that was from eating certain foods that are um, supposed to be keto friendly. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Some foods that are keto friendly affect me still in my joints, but if I do not eat those foods, I don't have any joint pain. I feel great. I have energy. My hormones are balanced. I don't, I do have hot flashes. I still have hot flashes, but they are not nearly as often and not nearly as intense as they were. I'll have like on the way home today, I was in the car with my coat on and I just got hot in the car. I took off my coat. Once I had it off, I was fine. I didn't really, I broke out a little bit on a sweat, but it wasn't like I used to have when I felt like my body was absolutely on fire. I don't have those kind of hot flashes anymore. My mood is more balanced, my energy level is up, the facial hair is gone, the skin tags, I used to have skin tags under my arms, they're gone. I didn't have them removed, they just went away. People commented and told me when I've talked about that before, that skin tags are a sign of insulin resistance. So uh, once I stopped the sugar, the skin tags went away. <laughs> Overall, I feel incredible, I don't have headaches, I don't have joint pain, uh, I have energy, I don't feel like my hormones are all out of whack. I just feel normal. I am also not on any medications. I kind of ended my relationship with my rheumatologist. Um, she ended up moving to another uh, building and when they moved, they called me and they told me that she was gonna be moving and I just never rescheduled an appointment with her. I haven't had any blood work done 
for my ANA titter. I don't know where it's at now. I don't know if it's still showing positive for lupus or if it's normal. I keep thinking every time I go to my doctor for my yearly exam and get all my blood work and that, that I wanna ask her to test that to see where it's at, but I always forget. But it's a good thing that I forget because it's not, I'm not having any issues that would make me even think that I have any of those issues. So, so how did I do this with just my food choices? Uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you my experiences and what I think has helped. So what do I eat on a ketogenic diet? Well, I have a lot of videos that you can watch after you watch this video of my what I eat in a day videos and you'll see some examples. Now, I'm not perfect, especially when I first started my YouTube channel a year and a half or two years ago, I was still learning. So you may see some things in some of my videos that I ate that I have learned since then that I no longer eat because um, I may have thought at the time that they were a good for me food, but over time I have learned to eliminate some more things. So when you watch my older What I Eat In A Day videos, there may be things on those videos that I no longer eat now. I've had people comment on some of my older videos and say, you know, you shouldn't be eating that. Well, I don't eat that anymore. I used to eat that before I learned about it. And now that I know about it, I don't eat them anymore. But I'm not gonna go and delete those videos just because I have changed some of my choices. I just keep moving forward. I believe that a whole one ingredient food diet is what healed my body. I stick with whole one ingredient foods, meat, some low carb vegetables. I try my best to stay away from processed food, highly processed food. In my opinion, bacon is a processed food. It goes through a little bit of a process. When they butcher the pig, they have to process that bacon a little bit in order to make it into bacon, right? To season it or to smoke it or whatever. So it goes through a little bit of a process, but to me, bacon. I read the labels on my bacon because there are some bacons that are not as clean as other bacons, but I try to get the zero sugar bacon. I'm not talking about that kind of processed food. I'm talking about highly processed food. Foods that come in packages that have a bunch of preservatives or ingredients in them that you do not know how to pronounce. I really try to stay away from those kind of foods the keto granolas, the keto chips, the keto cookies, all of those kind of um, keto foods that people may do well on if they're just doing this for weight loss. But if you are doing this for healing, I really believe wholeheartedly that you need to eliminate those processed foods. Anything that has a bunch of ingredients. Now I will take like an egg life wrap that has three or four ingredients on the package, I know what all of those ingredients are and it's pretty clean to me. So I am okay with eating that egg life wrap that comes out of a package. It has been processed, it's made into a wrap and they mix it with some other ingredients. There's a process there, but I'm okay with the ingredients. I, occasionally I will have a hot dog or a sausage, but I make sure that I read all of the ingredients on the label. They're ingredients that I understand what they are. If they don't, I have looked them up and I have learned what they are and they are minimal ingredients, minimally processed, all right? So I do eat some processed food, but I make sure that it is pretty clean in ingredients, if that makes sense. You wanna stay away from any kind of processed food like I said, that has ingredients that you do not know how to pronounce and it is like a list this long. It's not worth it if you are experiencing joint pain, headaches, all the things that I went through. Those processed foods are just not worth it. All right, so first thing, cut out as many processed foods as you can. Stick with whole one ingredient foods, meat that comes in a package, hamburgers, steak, chicken, pork chops, you know, all of that fish, I always forget to mention fish because I'm not a big seafood person, but yes, you can have fish. It's very healthy for you, but you wanna make sure that you are sticking with whole one ingredient foods. As far as vegetables, I have gotten to where I eat a lot less vegetables. I have even found recently that some vegetables that I eat that used to not bother me 
bother me now. They bother me in a way where I have some swelling in my fingers. I also have some gut issues with some of the vegetables that I eat now. So my vegetable list has dwindled down over the course of this two years. I do have a handful of vegetables that I enjoy. I love lettuce, I love cucumbers, I love onions, I love garlic. Um, there's a few more on the list that I love, but I have found that when I eat some, even low carb vegetables, I have some issues. Next thing that I'm gonna talk about is something that is super important. In fact, this should have been the number one thing that you should eliminate if you're trying to heal your body, and that is inflammatory seed oils. Now, I may fail to mention some, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, all of those oils that are made from seeds, they are very inflammatory. They cause your body inflammation. A lot of packaged foods, even keto foods, have soybean oil or canola oil. They're not good for you. Those kind of oils, they're very inflammatory if you are trying to heal your body from inflammation. So what should you use in its place? Butter, bacon grease, beef tallow, lard, Coconut oil, avocado oil is good. Olive oil is okay as well. But you wanna do your research and find out what are seed oils and stop using them. Start using more of a animal fat for cooking. That is the best, all right? The next thing that I believe that I have eliminated that has really helped in healing my body in a lot of ways is eliminating sugar. You wanna make sure that you are getting rid of all the sugars and you also wanna make sure that you are not using artificial sweeteners as a substitute. You wanna make sure that you are using more natural sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit or um, allulose, all right? You wanna stick with the more natural sweeteners, not artificial sweeteners, and stay away from sugar, all right? I believe, this is kind of t TMI, but I had for years, I struggled with uh, recurrent yeast infections and they were horrible. All right. TMI, right? But I'm just going to tell you, I believe that me completely getting away from sugar is what has helped that yeast overgrowth in my body. There are other things that I know my body has benefited from as well by eliminating sugar, but I really believe that the overgrowth of yeast has really benefited from cutting out sugar. Another thing that I have found for myself now, not everybody's the same, but this is something that I have discovered even over the past few months. I used to eat a lot of almond flour. I used to love almonds. I would eat almonds. I would drink almond milk and use almond flour in baking. And I have discovered for my own self by, um, I, eliminated, I eliminated it for a while because I'm watching my oxalates too because I have had kidney stones and right now for two and a half years, I was told two and a half years ago after I had my kidney stones blasted and I had, I had multiple kidney stones and I had those blasted and I passed them all. I had the whole the stent and everything, got them all passed. Then I went back so many months later and I had another one that was right in the middle of my kidney, a really good size one. And I never went back. I don't know if it's still there. I know I didn't like pass it. I don't know if it's still sitting there in my kidney and I'm gonna find out one day or if it has dissolved, that's what I'm hoping for. But I have cut back on my oxalates. Some of the things that I am staying away from is almonds and spinach is another one that has a lot of oxalates in it. And there's a whole list of high oxalate foods that you can do your own research on that I'm staying away from. And so I had given up almonds, almond milk, almond flour for a while because of the oxalates, because of my kidney stones. And I, one day I was experimenting with some desserts because I make recipes for YouTube and I have a cookbook and I'm trying to make another cookbook. And I had discovered when I was trying um, a recipe with almond flour that my joints were hurting the next day my fingers were very stiff. That's the only thing different that I had was the almond flour. It may not aggravate other people, but for myself, I have discovered that some nut flours are also causing me inflammation and joint pain. I think that as you start this and you start to cut your carbs down low, which is really important as well, I keep my total carb count every day. I try to keep it under 20, but most days I keep it under 10 grams per day. That's total carbs. I don't count net carbs. 
Net carbs to me are just more carbs. I eat whole one ingredient foods. If I have vegetables, they are very low carb and I just have a minimal amount of them. I don't eat highly processed foods. I stay away from sugar. I also have eliminated the seed oils. Um, it's really funny. I have to, this is a little side note. So about a week or so ago, I had some macadamia nuts in my pantry and they had been there for a while and I thought, I'm gonna try to make my own macadamia milk. Now macadamia nuts do not bother me so far. I have no issues. I drink macadamia milk with my, in my, uh, my uh, protein shakes. And so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and try to make my own with these macadamia nuts. And I made it on YouTube. I didn't even pay attention. It just like went right past me to look at the label on the nuts. And lo and behold, there was some seed oils in those nuts. And let me tell you, people came at me. <laughs> they came at me because here I preach, eliminate seed oils. Well, I innocently, so innocently, innocently grabbed this bag of nuts that was in my pantry out of the pantry and I made milk with them and come to find out they had some seed oil in them. <laughs> and come on people, you don't have to be like that. I did a demonstration for everyone and that was it, all right? So anyways, I'm not gonna linger on that. Now I do have dairy. Uh, dairy does not bother me. It may bother some people. If you are a person who has joint pain, autoimmune issues, headaches, all the things that I've talked about today, and you have done all the things that I have done, you have cut out the seed oils, you are eating whole one ingredient foods, you are, you've eliminated sugar, you're keeping your carbs really low, you're doing all those things, but you're still experiencing some pain, you're still not completely healed. First of all, it takes time. It takes time for your body to get damaged and it takes time for your body to heal. So I would say, give it time, be patient. Things don't happen overnight, but if you're doing it and you're consistent with it, and um, hello, my word for 2024 is consistency, all right? That is my word for 2024. You have to be consistent with this if you are going for healing. You can't be inconsistent and receive results. You have to stay consistent with it. You can't have cheat days. You can't have cheat meals. You can't go to a birthday party and have a chocolate cake and then get back on track. You really want healing to come to your body. You have to stay consistent. You have to have self-discipline and you have to stay away from all of those kind of foods, like consistently. But if you're doing all of those things and you are just not improving, so, go even further. Eliminate dairy. I know, I know it's really hard because I love dairy. I love cheese. I love my heavy cream. I understand, but sometimes you need to go dairy free. People need to go even further and do an elimination diet. And that is where you go with just meat. And the ideal would be to go beef and salt for 30 days. So I just had to move into another room. Ed has some visitors. So, um, but you can do an elimination diet where you are just doing beef and salt. Do that for 30 days. And after 30 days, start adding in some different meats, some pork, some chicken, some fish. See how those kind of foods affect you. And if you do okay with that, then move on to adding some vegetables. So you wanna try some different vegetables. But every time you add certain things in, you really need to pay attention to your body, take note and see how your body's reacting to certain foods. I will say as I wrap up this video, that keto does not cure everything. It's not a cure-all, okay? So I wanna get that across to everyone. There may be health issues that you have and you are doing this saying you're staying consistent, you're doing all the things and you're still experiencing some issues. Keto doesn't cure everything, but I do believe that keto does get rid of inflammation. It helps a bunch of metabolic diseases that are caused by foods and just improving those things alone can really help with other things that are going on in your body. It doesn't cure everything, I wish it did, but I do believe that it can make your life better and bring you so much more quality. So I wanted to share that today. This might've been really chatty and lengthy, but um, I have been wanting to share this for a while. It's something that's been on my heart and in my mind. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Make sure you subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It really helps out our channel and have a great day. God bless.